Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 11 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. session of the 2019 Open Simulator Community Conference. In this session, we are happy to introduce a presentation called State of the Open Simulator Community. Our speaker is Maria Korolov. Please check out the website found at conference.opensimulator.org for full speaker bios, details of sessions, and the full schedule of events. Maria is a published author and covers artificial intelligence for CIO Magazine and cybersecurity for CSO Online. She is also the editor of Hypergrid Business since 2009. In real life, she has run a business news bureau in Shanghai, covered wars in the former Soviet Union, and written about local politics for the Chicago Tribune. Now she's covering Open Simulator, an experience about which she will share with us today. The session is being live streamed and recorded, so if you have questions or comments during the session, you may send tweets to at OpenSimCC with the hashtag OSCC19. Welcome, everyone. Let's begin the session. Well, thank you, Galen, for those kind words. I appreciate the introduction. And hi, everybody. Um, I'm sure a lot of you already know me, but those who don't, um, as Galen said, I'm the editor of Hypergood Business, which is at hypergoodbusiness.com. There's my real life picture up there on uh, the screen from this summer. And yes, I've grown out my hair. If you saw me last year, my hair was quite a bit shorter. Um, and I'm here to talk about a decade's worth of statistics from OpenSim. This talk can go for hours, so I'm going to try to be brief and get it into 20 minutes. I'm going to be covering uh, the monthly stats I've been collecting uh, for the past 10 years, the surveys that we've done. Uh, we did two surveys just in the last couple of months. I'll be presenting some of that data for the first time ever today. So here's the overview. This year has not been a great year for OpenSim. Registered users are up because they only go down when a grid goes out of business. Uh, but land area is down and so are active users. And um, there's um, uh, the, the, the total number of grids has, has stayed steady. There's been about 391 grids that have been active this year. Now, now I'm talking about public grids that are accessible to the public, either by creating an account on the grid or by hypergridding in. Um, this is, does not count grids that do not make themselves, uh, that don't publicize them as public grids, like a grid that's open only on part-time in someone's basement. And it doesn't count the couple of thousand or so grids running the Dream Grid installer or all the grids run by schools and companies. And we've, we've heard about a lot of those today, and we will be hearing about more of those as this weekend continues. So there's a lot of private action happening in OpenSim and educational action and nonprofit action that doesn't show up in my statistics. So these are the grids that are accessible to the public, either via login or via hypergrid teleport. And uh, for the most part, they have been hypergrid enabled. Uh, last year, uh, InWorlds shut down, and that was the last big grid that was not on a hypergrid. Right now, the only major grid left that's not hypergrid enabled is the tag grid. Um, Dream Nation is also another one that's not hypergrid enabled. Um, Evanation, uh, Virtual Highway, and InWorlds are all gone. As a result, 98% of all land area in OpenSim is now on a hypergrid enabled grid and 97% uh, uh, 97% of land area, 98% of all active users are on the hypergrid. Uh, the hypergrid also has a big marketplace, uh, the Kitely market, which delivers to hundreds of grids. And we have a hypergrid currency, Globit, which is also widely used on multiple grids. So the hypergrid is definitely becoming the kind of community, uh, the kind of metaverse that I really expected OpenSim to be from day one. And uh, it really is. And I'm really proud of the state of the hypergrid and the way that it, re it really everyone is really connected in OpenSim. And that's a really positive thing um, uh, for me to see. So this chart is of active users over the last uh, 10 years. 
we started out at a few thousand uh, users, um, around 10,000 back when I first started keeping track of the statistics, uh, most of them on OS Grid. Uh, now we're up to around a little over 33,000 active users um, on the public grids, and this is down um, a couple of thousand from last year. And the land area has gone down to around 73,000 standard region equivalents. A lot of grids have variable size regions. So you have like a three uh, areas the size of nine standard regions. Um, and I count them in terms of standard regions because that's what users see. I mean, nobody knows what, you know, what the actual database, uh, how it counts it. We did a survey um, this fall of what people think of their grids and about 400 people voted in this survey. And um, I found out where my readers spend most of their time. And uh, that's, for the most part, is OS Grid, uh, followed by, um, followed by, and I lost track of my slide here, uh, followed by DigiWorlds, which is a, um, a commercial grid um, by Terry Ford. OS Grid is a public open source grid. And then the Canadian grid. Uh, and Kitely, which runs the Kitely market, which is a big, um, another big commercial grid. And um, 91% of our readers would recommend their grid to other people. So for the most part, um, I mean, for, for the overwhelmingly most part, people in OpenSIM love the grids that they are on. Um, we also ask people to rate to their grids. And you can see from this chart behind me that for the most part, the ratings for grids were uniformly high. And the difference between the grids was only like a couple of fractions of a, of a percentage point. The grids that came out on top in this year's survey were Craft, Encore Escape, and Utopia Sky. Uh, Craft is a big nonprofit grid based in Europe. They're known for their art scene. and um, Encore Escape and Utopia Sky are two of the smaller public commercial grids. Um, Craft was voted tops in technology content and support in this survey. Um, and Encore Escape uh, also did really well and tied for first for community technology and support. And Utopia Sky um, was one of the other grids that got a perfect score for support this year. So people really like uh, what they're getting from the grid owners and administrators. Uh, OpenSIM users also like to travel. Uh, on average, our readers have got, been to 4.6 different grids. Now, this is just the grids that they remember visiting. Um, I'm sure lots of people visited lots of other grids that they don't remember the names of. Um, and the most visited grid was o o OS Grid, followed by... Uh, followed by Kitely, then Metropolis, um, and um, OS Grid and Metropolis are both um, public nonprofit grids. Um, I also did a sentiment survey, and this was uh, just this past week. I have not published the numbers yet, so you're getting these numbers for the first time ever. Um, the full story will be up on the website next week. Um, so for the most part, people are extremely optimistic about OpenSIM's future. Um, only uh, 7% were very pessimistic, 11% uh, were somewhat pessimistic, and everyone else was had a positive, positive view of what's going to happen with OpenSIM. Uh, which is a good sign because we're, we're, we're having some drops in uh, the statistics, as you saw. Uh, and there's some worries about what the role of OpenSIM is going to be. Uh, high fidelity just pretty much shut down all of its virtual world operations. So that's kind of sad. Um, some of the other companies have also been struggling with virtual reality and seeing some uptake about it. Um, Second Life has had problems getting traction for its new Sansar platform. And uh, we're, everyone seems to be kind of waiting to see what's going to happen next. And we're at this inflection point. Um, but uh, as far as OpenSIM goes, the people who are currently using OpenSIM are happy with it, plan to do more with it, and are optimistic for its future. In fact, 
they are extremely optimistic about the amount of time that they're going to spend there. Uh, more, more than, uh, 94% said that they're either going to spend the same amount of time or even more time in open sim next year than this year. And I would like to add in that I will too, on a personal note, about a year ago, I was actually considering shutting down hypergood business. Um, it's basically a full-time job running it. We've done 3,000 articles over the past, uh, 10 years. That's an average of nearly an article a day. So that's, that's a lot of work to do it. And, and our ads are free. So, you know, this, this is a purely a volunteer effort, but, uh, it's, it draws me back. Um, and I'm really excited about doing more writing about virtual reality. In fact, um, uh, including some fiction writing. So definitely you can expect to see a lot more of me next year as well. And several new people have joined up to do regular articles for the Hypergood Business website, which I'm also really happy to see. Uh, in fact, I welcome anybody to send in columns, story ideas, press releases. We've had more than 200 contributors uh, so far to, to Hypergood Business, and we're more than happy to see anybody else uh, joining us as well. Um, so as far as recent technical developments are concerned, people are more satisfied than unsatisfied. Um, but we've, um, there's been some progress in uh, the OpenSIM technology, as we've heard uh, this year, uh, earlier this morning from the developers panel. Um, but it hasn't been as radical as some people expected it to be. The progress has been very slow and very incremental in OpenSIM. Um, and some people are disappointed with that. And I heard about some of that in the comments which I'll be sharing in, in more length on the website next week. Um, people are also generally satisfied with the OpenSIM ecosystem, with the grids, people, and content um, that are available on this platform. VR was a very divisive question um, in this year's survey. Uh, a large percent of our readers, 32% or nearly a third, said that they did not think that VR has anything to do with OpenSIM's future, which is a, a pretty big, um, and, and to me, a kind of a shocking a result. Um, and the rest of people were generally split about how important VR is going to be. Uh, OpenSIM is not currently really optimized for virtual reality. There are ways you can kind of jury rig it um, into an Oculus uh, Rift or a Google Cardboard, like uh, we heard from another presentation this morning. And I have done it. I have visited OpenSIM on a Google Cardboard headset. It is possible but it's not a wonderful experience. And one of the fundamental reasons is the frame rate is optimized to work well on a visual display monitor. And in virtual reality, if the frame rate goes down or there's a bit of a lag, your body starts thinking that something's wrong with your vision. Maybe you've been poisoned. Maybe you should throw up. So that really, really hurts the user experience. And that's a fundamental characteristic of how OpenSIM is architected. And Second Life had the same problem. Uh, they threw out uh, their plans of trying to create a VR viewer for Second Life, which they, they were experimenting with for a while. And they, you know, put their efforts into Sansar. It is really, really difficult to rebuild a virtual world infrastructure to have a steady frame rate when you've been all along been optimizing it for a good desktop experience. So I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that some progress can be made um, and that we can do something because obviously if OpenSIM, I think, would be a fantastic virtual reality platform where people can build their virtual reality world from the inside. But it will take a massive reworking of the code base and of course of the viewer. We need better graphics. We need consistent frame rates. We need a uh, much lower lag, more responsiveness. And maybe we'll get that with 5G, with new cloud-based deployments. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Um, it's quite a bit, is, it's quite, quite a bit early. Uh, we don't even know what the hardware is going to look like 
for virtual reality once it all shakes out. So, um, so that's something I'm going to be keeping a very close eye on over the next few years because it's something that's very interesting to me and close to my heart. Um, I've also asked people what they think about the progress of VR in OpenSim. And for the most part, people were neutral or unhappy with the progress for VR support, which which kind of makes sense because I've as I've explained, there are some big structural issues for um, getting OpenSim into virtual reality. Um, I also asked people what features they wanted to see in OpenSim. So. Um, and this was an open-ended question. People could write in as many features as they wanted, and um, people use different words to express them. So I pulled out the ones that came up most often in people's comments. So first of all, everybody wants a dedicated viewer for OpenSim. This was uh, an issue of some debate this year because – Firestorm for a while said they were going to have a separate viewer for OpenSim so that we could have OpenSim specific features and tools in the viewer and we can leave off all the stuff that's unique to Second Life and all the Second Life promotional materials that we currently see in the viewer. Um, but then they decided not to do it because they had a lack of people who, who were able to work on that, on, on that. Um, and uh, people are split on that because on the, on the one hand, keeping up with Second Life kind of gives us the drive to move forward uh, for, for some developers. But on the other hand, it does mean that we can't have some nice things in OpenSim that we could otherwise have if we had our own viewer. Uh, so that's something that uh, a lot of people are interested in. Um, a more modernized code base. Um, so there were several different takes on how this could go. Um, but that's something that came up a lot that we need, uh, a more, uh, a code review that brings the OpenSim server software up to date. Um, because as I mentioned before, we've had some incremental changes. Um, now we might see some, pro some, um, some uh, bigger improvements as a result of the new scripting engine that came in from Avenation, um, and that was also discussed uh, earlier today in the developers panel. Um, so, uh, and we have some new physics uh, engine um, options going on in OpenSim and some new OpenSim specific scripting commands. S but um, those aren't really major, major revisions of the actual code base. And it's probably gonna be kind of hard to do because a lot of developers have moved on to other projects. So that's something that I'm also keeping an eye on and am very interested in uh, what's happening with OpenSim. As part of that, people also want to see more documentation for the OpenSim code and features um, and, um, and some more and the few detailed specific things that they wanted to see, which I will cover uh, next week. People want to see better content protection. Um, there's been some controversy this year about uh, stolen content popping up on some grids and the steps that grid owners have been taking to uh, to crack down and copy body content. It makes OpenSim look bad, makes uh, creators hesitant to come here and share uh, their products. Um, but for me, the hopeful sign is that for the most part, creators on the Kitely market have a choice whether they're going to be stay on one grid or be open to the hypergrid and share with everybody. And all the growth has been with the hypergrid, with a shareable, exportable content that can travel to other grids. Uh, and for me, that's a very optimistic sign that merchants are seeing that by, make, by making legal content available in an easy way to everybody in OpenSim at a very low cost, uh, that they're going to they're going to make uh, more money. They're going to be more more profitable. And people will be happier knowing that they have legitimate licensed content that they're using. I personally get a lot of my stuff from the Kitely market, including the hair I'm wearing today. Thank you very much. Um, and um, I really love seeing what's what's going on with that platform. OK, um, Maria. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm out of afraid. time. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid. Um, just very briefly, I know you still wanted to talk about better hypergridding, web-based viewer, baked on mesh. Um, That's well, those things are self-explanatory. Yeah, you can I just think read so them, too, and so. you can All move right. on. 
And oh, that you. was my last slide. <laughs> Aren't I good? Thank so you, Maria, for a terrific my, presentation. <laughs> there's my uh, email address, there Maria at hypergoodbusiness.com. Send okay. me press releases, survey ideas, comments, columns, opinion pieces. All right. Graphics. Thank That's you, Maria. Great. As a reminder to our audience, you can see what's coming up on the conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org. Following this session, the next session will begin at 12.30 p.m. in this keynote region and is entitled Future of Social Worlds Panel. Also, we encourage you to visit the OSCC 19 Poster Expo in the OSCC Expo 3 region to find accompanying information on presentations and to explore the Hypergrid Tour resources in OSCC Expo 2 region, along with the sponsor and crowdfunder booths located throughout all of the OSCC Expo regions. (music) 